I'm Rick Nittling, I'm an Olympic gold medalist and shareholder and marketing director of Aldevi Estate, which recently acquired Pearl Valley Estate. I've been living in the beautiful Paul Frontrick Valley for the last five years. We are situated right in the heart of the Cape Winelands. Security is our number one priority and it's something we work on every day. And this has earned us the reputation of being the safest estate in Africa. The lifestyle that this area has to offer truly is country living at its best. We're just five minutes away from the historic town of Paro. Paro really is an incredible area to explore, with little gems like the Spice Route and Fairview Farms. But the biggest attraction is the excellent schools. Franchuk, on the other hand, is a major international tourist destination and also known as the culinary capital of South Africa, with a diverse offering for every palate and occasion. Our recent acquisition of Pearl Valley is a major game changer for us. Our residents can now enjoy a wide range of amenities unmatched anywhere else in the world. There's the world-famous Jack Nicklaus Signature Golf Course, which is consistently ranked among the top golf courses in South Africa. And there are some beautiful properties on the course. Volde V really is the ideal family environment. We also cater to equestrian lovers with facilities on offer for every discipline, from the two Hurlingham Standard Polo Fields to our state-of-the-art equestrian centres and miles of trails. Our horses live in paradise too. Volde V has its own wine farm and cellars producing award-winning wines which every resident can be proud of. I've been blessed to travel the world but this is the place I come home to. I'm sure you can see why we call it the Valley of Life. And this is my neighborhood. What is the bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigal fail, Sisoke. Once as Amal San. That is African Nasty. Good evening and welcome to episode 28 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamantungwa Kumalo. We're on day 55 of the national lockdown. We're going to make it to 100. I've called it. We all know it's going to happen. Um, I think if anything, we probably just need to find different coping mechanisms to help us get there. Now, this evening, of course, it is a Wednesday, so we are joined by APSA. And tonight we'll be looking at the importance of insurance 
in the property market with APSA. And to help us better understand, you know, the different kinds of insurance you can find, the different ways you can utilize them, and some of the solutions that APSA has for us, given this pandemic that we find ourselves in. I'm joined this evening by Eugene Strauss, who's the Managing Executive of Life Insurance at APSA. Good evening, Eugene. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening, Samantunga. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. So I think before we even you know, get to some of the different you know, products that people could potentially access and why they're so important for us to have, let's perhaps look at the importance of you know, insurance in the property market. And let's look at both long-term and short-term insurance. Yes, thank you. I think um, if I have to summarize it in one word, it's really about protection. So you're protecting a couple of things. Firstly, I mean, um, for all of us, you know, when you're buying properties, it's a significant investment and you want to make sure that the asset's protected, but also you want to make sure that if something happens to you from a health perspective, that you're able to service it, especially if you've been, you know, if you've had to incur debt, which most, most uh, consumers have to do, get into pl in place. So we really protect, the insurance protects it in two ways, the short-term insurance cover, which usually is referred to as homeowner's cover, protects the actual physical asset in an event that is damage to it from hailstorms, you know, flooding, whatever the natural causes they might be. And then life insurance typically covers you against the health events, you know, so if you, you fall ill um, and, and, and or, or in a very unfortunate event of death that, you know, you're able to still um, keep that property for your family with, 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 with you. Um, and I think um, the, the, it takes away the financial burden, the life insurance assist you take that. So it really is about, you know, protection of, 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 of the asset physically and keeping it in your family or with your loved ones. And I think, you know, insurance is one of those things that sometimes we, we, we typically tend to shrug off. Um, because it's almost like that extra debit order or an extra, you know, second debit order. And so many of us think that we are overly insured. I mean, there's car insurance, then you've got your household insurance. Some people, you know, insure their cell phones separately. So it's almost as though we're always paying for insurance. So sometimes when you're kind of sitting down and doing a tally of, you know, some of the expenses that you want to do away with or some of those line items that you see going off in your bank account that you want to you know, eliminate, more often than not, people will sometimes go and say, you know, I'm actually going to cancel this insurance. I haven't claimed in 18 months, sometimes even more. Why should I, you know, actually maintain it? Perhaps you can, if, if you can share with our viewers at home, what, what some of the important things to remember are when it comes to insurance? Because I think so many of us might want to, you know, cancel insurance policies at this time thinking, okay, I'm going to maybe cut down maybe 2,000 with some people 3,000 rands um, in terms of my monthly expenses. But really, what are some of the things that we should be mindful of when it comes to insurance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously the first thing I would say to that is please keep your cover intact. <laughs> obviously, I will say that, but um, I think that one of the first things to start with is that I mean, the price you pay for insurance is, is largely based on, you know, insurers are assessing the risk associated with you as an individual, um, whether it's, you know, for, on the property, looking at the value of the property, looking at, you know, the construction of the property, when it comes to your, you know, your own your, your own, um, um, if it comes to life cover, it's about your health and your age, and these sort of things. And, and, and that's why it's very important. One of the first things to, to remember, it's very important to be, you know, very uh, truthful in what you disclose at the time when you take it out, you know, in terms of, you know, what you're filling in on the form and what you say. Not only will it enable you to pay the right price, but you're also making sure that, you know, if something does happen, that, you know, the cover does actually um, pay out. So, 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 so the disclosure you provide Having that accurate just takes away the risk of, of, of the cover not paying out um, for, for any reason. Um, the second thing is, you know, having the right amount. I think that's quite important because, as you said, I mean, we, we fully appreciate that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's, it's you pay with your hard-earned cash for that, you know, and there's a lot of other things it's competing with, you know, you have to put food on the table, et cetera. So, um, and, and there's a couple of things that, that impact that. And from a short-term perspective, when it comes to the cover that you've taken out over your home, just making sure that you, you know, on a frequent basis assess that, you know, the replacement value that's specified in your policy is still accurate because that helps you to make sure that you don't have, you know, a too high or too low amount of, of, of cover in place. And then when it comes to the life, the life part, what we see in life insurance is when it comes to home, in homes in particular, um, people incur debt, home loans to, to take that out and then, 
you know, they, they, they seed a life policy, give it a session of security so that in the event that something happens, you know, that, that, that the installment can be serviced or the debt can be serviced. And um, what, what, what you need to consider when you're doing that as a session is that if actually taking out that life cover to uh, sustain the livelihoods of, you know, your loved ones or, or, the, or the people that you, you, you're pledging the policy to, and that with the session, actually what ends up happening is a, a chunk of that will go into actually settling, you know, the debt or, and, and, and from that perspective, you just need to make sure that there's, you know, a sufficient amount left to still sustain the livelihoods of whoever you had in mind when you bought the policy for protection. Um, I think the, 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 the third thing I would say is when you're uncertain, get advice. I think there's, there's obviously we do know that there's, there is quite a lot of things that's, you know, for us, it's, it's common language, but, you know, we do know that it's not, not concepts that's always widely understood. Um, banks have people that, you know, either through telephony channels or face-to-face, -face, you know, in branches, you know, we have advisors, we have fast credit people on the line. Um, so if you, if you ever are stuck, talk to someone, you know, because I think they can help you and guide you and actually have the, the right sort of, sort of event in place. And then something I would add quite recently, you know, as a, as a last sort of point to keep in mind is that um, life cover actually covers not only death, people associated with death, which it certainly covers, but you know, some policies also have temporary disability benefits. If you're unable to work for 30 days, it has loss of income benefits or income protection, and if you're unable to earn an income. You know, so also to just you know, think about those benefits. Don't just think about the death cover when you're buying the policy. You know, something that you actually mentioned is when people choose to see their life cover um, in the event of their death, uh, you know, to ensure that they, it pays for their home loans. What are some of the things that somebody should actually be watching out for in the event where they choose that option? I mean, is that even yeah. an option you would typically recommend or is it better to simply, you know, have the life cover, uh, let's say it's a million rand or two million or whatever the amount is, and then have a separate cover for the home loan itself so that in the event that something happens to you or you pass away, that that insurance essentially then pays off the rest of the mm -hmm. home loan and then your family essentially has the money for uh, from the life cover. Yeah, I think the first thing to say is that it is, is, it's, it is very difficult to, situations do vary and it's quite, advice is quite important and you need to consider your unique circumstances because um, sometimes the life cover in place is sufficient. But if you look at how cost of living increases over time, what tends to happen is that the life cover has not kept track with that. So in most circumstances, it tends to be quite useful to actually take out a specific cover to cover the, the, the facility, the home loan. And because what it does is that the original policy then does what it's supposed to do, which is to actually cover the, um, you know, the, 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 the cost of living that you want to provide for, for your loved ones. Um, but it is also true that, you know, extension of your existing cover can also be a solution. Um, and it would be important to just look and compare the two options. Unfortunately, um, you know, within banks, we offer both those. We also offer some lower value products, even products that you can, you can buy with the, with the cover almost. Um, and, and you really would need to consider your circumstances. The, the general thing to consider, though, is, you know, how long ago did you take out that policy? Have your lifestyle expenses grown quite a lot? Because that's what you're trying to, 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 to cover. And, you know, if, 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 you haven't taken, if you haven't taken out lava cover recently, I mean, you're not sure that it's actually adequately covering what you need to do um, when you get disabled or, 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 or if there is a death event. Um, then I would say, you know, rather consider both. So it, it does depend um, situation by situation, but what we do see is that, you know, people tend to be underinsured in South Africa. You know, so Eugene, I mean, a lot of people are currently finding themselves in quite a difficult financial position due to the COVID-19 crisis and the effect that it has, you know, on the economy, the state of jobs, uh, multiple people losing their jobs and their livelihoods or their source of income. What if, you know, somebody is unable to meet their insurance, uh, you know, payments during this particular period? Is there any assistance from APSA uh, to assist, you know, customers who are unable to make those payments? Yes, absolutely. I think one of the first things I wanted to start off with is, is you know, as a life insurance company in APSA, I mean, our ethos is one of care. I mean, we believe that policies, buying a policy is not just about the piece of paper and, and the claim. It's actually about peace of mind. It's actually about making sure that, you know, when you pay that claim, 
you, you're enabling a future generation's possibilities, you know, and I think we took that really as our guiding principles and, and, and how we wanted to be there for our customers right now. So, I mean, in addition, I mean, the banks offered obviously the payment relief, which is, you know, where you could, um, you could stop paying installments for a month or two or defer them. And what would we've done on the life insurance side is um, if you have a life policy with us, um, and you are unable to pay. We've provided a two-month grace period. What that means is, for two months, you will allow you not to pay the premium. The cover will stay in place, will not be reduced. Um, and then, at the time when there is a benefit payout, you know, uh, whatever benefit reforms, we'll just recover the premiums we you couldn't pay at that stage. Um, and it's really a way that we we are there for our customers during this time, and it's this additional relief. We already have some of the, these grace periods in our policies. Um, some of our policies already have a two to three month period where we allow people not to pay premiums. So essentially, you know, depending on the policy you've got, it, it will provide between four to five months relief um, for payment. And we, so if I, if, if, if I understand that correctly, so if somebody essentially is unable to make that payment, um, you're essentially able to give them, suppose June and July, uh, grace period to, to not pay due to their financial circumstance and, the, and the, uh, the, the policy that they essentially have would still hold. Um, but then what happens to those whose situations don't change after July? Because as we you know, kind of seeing, we, we, we might be easing into level three, uh, hopefully next week, um, and we might stay there for a couple of more weeks and we don't even know if we might end up coming back to level four. So there's so many uncertainties and question marks around you know, the future that some people's financial circumstance might not necessarily have changed um, after July. Yeah, no, I think uh, the first thing to say is we do acknowledge that you know, there is a lot of uncertainty and you know, it, it's very difficult to actually be decisive and call you know, when, 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 when will we see, be able to emerge out of this. Um, so I think the first thing I would say is that, you know, um, we as a bank has come out and said we're starting to think about, you know, the next version of, of some of that relief. Um, what, on the life insurance side, <clears throat> as I've mentioned, you know, the two months we're providing is already in addition, so it essentially does give a, a couple more months of, of relief. Um, and, but my general advice would be to talk to, to your bank, especially if you, if, you, if you bank with us and then your life provider as well as your advisor, because, you know, there are options available, like you could potentially, you know, um, sell, buy a lower value cover. I mean, all these sort of options do become available. Um, like I've uh, uh, pleaded before, I think it's very important to try and keep your life cover in place. I know it's one of the first place where people go into, um, to go to, to, to save costs, but, you know, with the elevated risk at the moment, you know, it's a good idea to keep your life cover in place, but also, and what people must understand is that you know if you if you have lapsed the policy and you, and you go for an especially an, what we call an underwritten policy again, which is for the higher value covers, what you need to do, you know things like what if age plays a role. Um, so if you if you become older, you would have you would you likely to pay a higher premium. You know your 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 higher health has moved, and there's also waiting periods and more exclusions. And I think um, in most circumstances, it tends to be quite useful. And more of, and, and, and better from a price perspective to, to, to keep the cover. Um, and again, you know, if, if you're uncertain, you know, make sure you speak to someone, your bank, um, or your advisor, or your life company to help you through that. Uh, apologies, I seem to have lost the. Uh, connection can you what is a bank at a time like this in a world filled with uncertainties where lives are put on hold business paused and working together means staying apart at APSA being a bank means staying connected it means being a part of your future providing relief at a time of need and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you. 
helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigal fail, si so Once as Amal Saab. That is African Nasty. Hi, I'm Brandon Ruby. I'm an entrepreneur from Durban. The suburbs of Berea and Morningside are built on a natural ridge that overlooks the home of the Sharks, the Moses Mabita Stadium, uh, Durban Country Club. It's just got an incredible outlook elevated over the city. Living in Morningside makes so much sense to us because everything is so central. Anything that we choose to do is... Welcome back to episode 28 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamandunga Kumala. It seems that gremlins may have just gotten the better of us before the break. Of course, I am joined by Eugene Strauss, who's the Managing Executive of Life Insurance at APSA. And we're talking about the importance of insurance and property, uh, uh, you know, from or rather in the property market um, in collaboration, of course, with APSA and understanding the different, you know, um, products that are available and also just why it's so important to ensure that you're adequately um, insured when you have a property and sometimes even if you don't have a property because I think there's so many different types of insurance that a person can have of course we are taking your questions and comments at home so if you do have any do send them through and we'll get to some of the questions that we receive from our viewers at home Eugene I think one of them is perhaps if you could um, you know shed for us then the importance of credit life because we've been hearing a lot about credit life and how some people might have it, but they don't know that they have it. They must contact their service provider. What is it and why is it so important to essentially have it? Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so I, I uh, think that one thing to just start with is that I mean, we started talking previously about life insurance policies being seeded, usually on, on home loans where the values tend to be higher uh, it tends to be underwritten products, so you go for a medical test um, and it's, it's sold by an advisor. Um, credit life tends to be um, a, a not underwritten in the sense that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's more written as a pool of risks. Um, we don't do individual assessments of, of risk. And they therefore tend to be for, for smaller amounts of loans, like credit card, personal loans, for example, and vehicle and asset finance, but you do even find and some lower value loans that there's also a form of, of credit, credit protection policies on them. So, in, a, in, in short, you know, the whole purpose of a credit life policy is that it's a package of benefits um, that covers uh, installments or the outstanding balance um, of, the, of the credit facility for, for, for a couple of events being death, temporary disability, permanent disability, um, as well as uh, retrenchment and, and loss of income. And, and the reason why it's so important is that, you know, I think if you think about a scenario where what we've talked about where someone is, you know, under strain for a continued period, um, what happens is if with bank payment relief out there, and if there is a credit life policy, the credit life policy will essentially service a couple of installments, 
Then there's also the option of the bank payment relief that the customer can 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 opt for. And then on top of that, you know, in a, in a, in a situation like death, what it means is that the life cover will then go towards your loved ones to protect the future um, uh, livelihoods, whereas the, the credit life will cover the, the debt. So it's not another burden on your on your estate and on your asset value and on your asset values. And that's really why it is so important. And I think if, if anyone has been involved in the process of an estate, um, uh, liquidity is a challenge usually in estates and in trusts. And what Credit Life does, it you know, actually frees up the cash in the sense that the, the facility is settled. And it certainly does. I mean, I can just imagine if somebody is heavily indebted um, in the event where you know credit life, they have credit life on some of that debt. It does essentially ensure that none of the proceeds that you would that would essentially be yours have to go towards um, you know settling those outstanding debts. We do have questions from our viewers at home. Um, the first one comes from Bonds uh, who asks, "Life cover, bond, or home insurance? Which one is the best?" Um, look, I think uh, home insurance. I would say you, 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 ideally you shouldn't be choosing between bond, bond insurance, and, and life and life cover. I think you need both. They cover different risks. The one, the one covers the actual something happening to the physical asset. The life insurance then obviously covers the, the the actual outstanding facility. And to my earlier point, I think what helps then is that you know the, the life. If you do take out life cover, it specifically cover your bond. What ends up happening is that that debt does not pass on to a state. You keep the house and you get the proceeds from any other life cover to actually fund future livelihoods. Um, I just missed a third. So bond insurance, um, life cover, or? Uh, so it's life cover, bond, or home insurance. Home insurance. And then the home insurance, obviously, is usually the home contents insurance, which is the insurance that of the the, 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 the stuff physically in your building, your your your, your your, your, your furniture, your equipment, etc. And it really is actually a package deal. And I think the, thing, the way to think about it is there's different risks covered by different you know, insurance. You know, the physical assets covered by the homeowner's cover, the homeowner's contents covers the actual uh, property, in the, 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 the stuff in your house, and then life cover. Um, it's, it, it's, it's different by situation, but in general, um, it tends to be more effective for large value cover you know if you, if you if you really have to if you really have to choose make sure you look after you know the, the, the big insured events i think that's the ones that's more difficult for consumers to come back from you know and but ideally you should have it as a as a package and have all three to be comprehensive but you know and i would say make sure you're covered for the large events that would be the most important things to look out for We've got another question, uh, Eugene, this time coming from Bruno Santos, who asks, is life insurance a better option and short-term insurance, would it be better to have a savings account where you put the money in that is um, invested and used for short-term short snags? That way you're not necessarily throwing away money. Yeah. So I think, I think um, the, that is a very good question. The, the one thing to say, though, is that the benefit of, of getting life insurance it works on the pooling of funds and and what that means is you know there's a there's a there's a number of risk events that you're pricing for that could happen so now what happens i mean that timing is spread out so if you have a large book so you have a large number of customers you know you have a less chance of that event happening to that customer at a certain point in time and what what pooling of risks means is that we we actually share across across the pool and and what that means though is you end up having more money in a pool to invest to get return to then cover those big events and so in most scenarios i think um if you if you if you are starting out and if you're building up still building up a you know a, a sizable invest portfolio it tends to be better to have life cover because what you have to save on your own to actually cover real big lifetime events like you know covering your your, your outstanding balance on your bond in, in the event of something happening or your house burning down it is quite a significant investment to, to or savings to put aside at quite a good yield. Whereas what life companies are able to do in short-term insurance and able to do, they pull the risk and therefore it's got a lot more scale in terms of investment and you end up being able to do it at a lower cost. 
Now, Eugene, you know, the unfortunate thing is, of course, many people, as we said earlier, are very likely going to find themselves um, without a job because they're ultimately going to, to probably get retrenched. We're seeing a number of companies doing a lot of restructuring uh, due to the effect of the COVID-19. Now, could you talk to us a little bit about the retrenchment and loss of income benefits that APSA has on, on offer? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I think that's uh, the, the, the first place to start is to say that, you know, we are so aware of, you know, that, that uncertainty and risk that's in the system. And it's with that in mind that we've looked at what we offer. So in terms of Create Life, as I mentioned earlier, it's a bit of a packaged product. So with that, you get death, disability, and the loss of income retrenchment cover. But it's also contracts that's been written over a long period of time. And therefore, some contracts uh, cover formal retrenchment. So in other words, you've been formally retrenched by an employer and doesn't cover other forms of losses of income. So what we've looked at as APSA is we, we've, we've looked at that definition and saying we really want to be there for our customers right now. And we've widened that temporarily. And what that means is that if you've bought a credit life policy with us, which had retrenchment cover that only covered you in the event of formal retrenchment, what we now will do is um, we will also cover for loss of income. So, for example, if you've been forced to go on unpaid leave, we will cover installments for, for up to three months. If you are a contract worker and were unable to, to, to perform your contract due to COVID-19 lockdown, etc., we will cover, cover a couple of installments. And it's really another, um, another step we're taking to say, look, during these times, we, we don't want to be so strict in terms of how we apply that. And we've temporarily relief, given some relief um, it's important to understand that you know if someone bought a policy where they only really paid for formal retrenchment cover or they didn't have that cover on that credit life policy, um, we still would offer that. I mean, so it's almost something that we do irrespective of us, the fact that we haven't been able to price for that. And it's another relief measure we've implemented. And I think you know you've already touched a little bit on um, you know contract workers. Perhaps talk to us a little bit about some of what is on offer for people who are perhaps self-employed or those contract workers, because the nature of their work is already you know relatively unstable when the economy is sort of functioning functioning in its normal way. Now more than ever, it's particularly people who are self-employed, um, a lot of them are uncertain about how they're going to go about you know, getting their next income. Some of them are probably need to pivot in terms of the nature of the work that they're doing. What are some products that are available for them to be able to access um, and really help them weather this uh, economic storm? Yeah. So credit, it, it is a very good question and it's something I've also looked at extensively in the sense that Credit life usually excludes self-employed, and if I can maybe spend a couple of seconds explaining why. I mean, what you're trying to do in, 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 in life insurance pricing is you're trying to avoid anti-selection risk. What that means simply is, you know, if you are self-employed, you could cause harm to your business, and your business could lose income, and then you claim, you know. So, and we're trying to avoid that moral hazard, and there's an elevated moral hazard when someone's self-employed because they literally can cause the event, you know, and we're trying to, 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 it's very difficult to price for that. It will make the life, cost of life insurance very expensive. However, what we have said though, is we do understand that we're in unusual circumstances. And at the moment, you know, while self-employment is an exclusion in our credit life policies, what we do um, offer is that we encourage customers to still contact us, submit the, uh, submit the claim. If you go onto our website, you can see you know, the credit life um, claims with, um, email address. And, in there, we will still consider it on a case-by-case -case basis. And if we see that, you know, there's a very strong causality and, and from, from in the specific event, uh, in the specific event, we can manage the risk of, of, of the moral hazard, then we will still consider those claims. So while it's an exclusion, it is something we do consider. You know, Eugene, before I let you go, any other tips that you'd like to share our viewers, uh, with our viewers at home um, in order to help them, you know, in, certainly financially navigate this particular space, whether they're already insured or whether they're con considering taking on a, a particular product. Any tips for our viewers? Yeah. I think my general tips would be, you know, at the moment, I mean, uh, reach out for advice when you need it. Talk to your bank um, early. I mean, the earlier you talk to your bank, the, the earlier that we, we can make plans to accommodate. Um, I would also just guard against, um, you know, making decisions that 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 um, expose you to big risk. Like, for example, you know, um, stopping some of the key covers, like your life covers, your your homeowners cover. I mean, they might in the short term help, but in the longer term, you know, cause can cause quite a lot of damage. 
and 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 yes just then say i mean we do appreciate that this is quite trying times and uh, we really want to be there for our customers and and and, and i think what we are showing as a bank is a lot of flexibility around how we how we solve for our customers. Eugene, thank you so much for joining us this evening. That was Eugene Strauss, the Managing Executive of Life Insurance at APSA, was helping us understand the importance of insurance in the property market and really, you know, shedding light about why it's so important for us to be adequately insured, but also the different steps that we can now take. And I think the really big one is speak to your financial provider. More than anything, this isn't the time to, you know, kind of take a passive perspective. And I know it's so overwhelming. There's so much happening. I think even the anxiety of us working from home and our homes becoming offices is already so much. You certainly don't want any financial stress to add on to the stresses that we currently face. So do reach out to your financial uh, service provider. And in the event where it's APSA, do reach out to them. They seem to be taking quite a proactive approach, but also catering to you know, people who are you know, self-employed, but also contract workers um, and really wanting to help them make sure that they can economically and financially weather these uncertain times. Eugene, thank you for joining us. That's been episode 28 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Wakumalu. We're back again tomorrow evening. Remember, stay home and stay safe until tomorrow evening.
What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Regal fail, si soke. Once as Amal Sam. That is African Nasty.